This is Erin, and we are here at Granite Falls Middle School, and we're going to be conversing with these seventh grade teachers, and they're going to tell us about technology in their digital math classrooms. And so we're going to start with question one, which is, how can technology be used in the math classroom to increase student conceptual understanding and performance? So um, what types of technology do you use in your classroom that um, demonstrates math con concepts for your students? The first thing that we just implemented last year was getting the graphing calculators in seventh grade. It used to be just the eighth grade, and uh, we fought to get them in the seventh grade just because they can learn sample blocks and whisker plots, and they can see it more visually the graphing yeah, calculator, so that's what technical. Well, you know, and the big push now is to see mathematics as a visual representation and as a graphic and then as um, like the, the algebra. So they can see mm -hmm. all three of those on that graphing calculator. Yeah, that's a really easily. good example. Um, another way is um, there are several teachers that have smart boards. And I have one because I have um, co-teaching, which means I have um, exceptional ed students in my classroom. Okay. So um, anytime I can do something on the smart board where it's interactive, you know, you can pull up a website, you can pull up um, all kinds of just interactive things where they can, the manipulatives are actually there and they move on the screen. So kids can come up and they can move parts to where they need to be if you're doing ratios or if you're doing, um, you know, actually a box and whisker plot. Yeah. You can draw it on there with the marker. You can... Um, you know, there's just like fraction bars. When you're doing fraction bars, you can say, okay, this is 50%. What does it look like? And it will actually, you can click and drag it to 50% or to 25 or, you know, yeah. so on. So they can actually see it and interact with it. And go, to, cool. go up and touch yeah. it. Whereas um, I do not have the smart board in here. So the way I get around that is I can pull up computer programs and through our projector, I can do it on theirs. But I still have to stay at my, you know, my, at my keyboard. Right. You're a little you know, more do, limited that right. way. So you so would be more isolated to sitting in front of your computer to do it, whereas you kind of can get the board. Now I'm at the board. Mm -hmm. They are like actively participating in it. Like they can actually go up and touch it. What I would love to have are those air writers where you have the slate and you carry it around the room oh, and, you can, and they hand it off. It, you can hand it off and, and they can then they draw on it and it goes up on the I know so William Lenore Middle has um, several of those. So does Gangle Middle. So how many of the classrooms in this school have smart boards that, you, like you said, should have? Like you mentioned, that you would like to have one in yours. Most tested subjects, I think, have them. And I know that... Smart boards? Um, most. Okay. So, yeah. I think so. I, I know it's... Um, EC. EC does. EC, EC does. And I think the AIG, um, Mary Beth just got hers. Okay. So you so. should be getting them. <laughs> okay, well it sounds like between the graphing calculators and the smart boards um, the, the classrooms are implementing technology that would help student understanding and performance. Another thing is our book, our new book, it's, um, it has a lot of tutorials that are online. So even the book itself is online, you can pull it up at home. It has game shows on it as well um, where we can use it in class or they can pull the, all, the entire textbook is online, so they can go home and they can pull up anything or the worksheets or anything like they that. They have videos where kids click on it. If they don't understand something, they give examples, and then it's like a YouTube clip that comes up, That's and nice. somebody's explaining it. So, so what percentage of your students do you think implement these about at home? Probably mine more so than yours. Um, like half or less than half? Or probably less than half still. Just... Um, it getting people, it, it does take, you know, and some people still, the parents come in, they still want a hard copy of the textbook. Oh, sure. And so, that, that's... Yeah. Well, that sounds really good. And you mentioned the use of games also in your classroom. Are your 7th graders, do they really like to play games, or are they yes. like, oh, this is stupid? How no, do they no, feel they about that? They love games. <laughs> do different things. We use, um, I know we both use PowerPoints to do, uh, like, Jeopardy, or Who Wants okay. a million, Millionaire for that. Mm -hmm. um, I also have things as simple as, like, a shower curtain that I use, I, I got this when I went to New York for learning styles, and it's a like a bullseye. It's a big bullseye, so if they get the question right, they get to come up and throw a hacky sack on the bullseye and get points that way. Uh -huh. Well, even just when you break kids up into groups of three, if you have just little cards, like if you're matching you know, percents and fractions and decimals, if they have cards and they have to deal them out, even just doing something like that, they love it. Yeah. It's just something different to reinforce a concept. 
And then, you know, they love to interact in middle school. They're going to love to talk. And if you can get them talking about math, that's great. So. Yeah. Are there many opportunities when you teach math to let them collaborate with each other? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's daily, pretty much, almost. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, so you discussed a little bit about the use of problem-based instruction. Do you want to tell more about that? We're moving to that. Like I said, we, we adopted the textbook that we did because it was kind of the in-between of going straight from the textbook of where you do the direct teaching and doing the complete, you kind of like, it's almost like you do an experiment and they pull, they the figure out, they, yeah, they pull the math from that. Mm -hmm. um, they're having a really hard time with it this year because it's the first year that they really get that implemented. Yeah. So in the, hopefully though, as that trickles down in the elementary, we'll get students more and more used to it, yeah. hopefully, and then it'll be easier. So, do you think that that same similar type of textbook will be used again next year, or do you think that the school oh, system yeah. might be like, oh, this is too complicated? Well, no, so, well, no, it'll we'll stay. Stick it'll it. stick with it. Because they pay a lot of money for <laughs> yeah, it. It's, 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 it's here for a while. <laughs> it's here for a while. Okay. Um, and so, could you give maybe a specific example of a problem-based question that you pose? You know, like you said, daily they collaborate. Is there like a daily um, problem-based question in math, or how does that work? Well, every day um, in our book, they have something that is some type of a problem-based. Um, Gets them thinking. Yeah, kind of it, it's an activity opening. that you can do. And then the next day, you're supposed to follow up with the direct instruction on that. But, you know, they have a journal where they, they have to answer the essential question. Mm -hmm. And so they'll go through the experience, you know, let's do this game or let's look at um, this map and let's look at the percent of change in this country. You know, so it went from 2.1 billion up to 4.8 billion, and so you know, and it's a whole experience. So you, you have to go through and say, well, how much did this change? And then they have to sort of figure that out, and yeah. then they pull from that. Well, how do you figure out that percent of increase? So it's right. like the kids are coming up with the formula, formula. Right. and then the next day you go over, well, this is what we did yesterday, yeah. you experienced this, so now let's talk about that formula and how we came up with it, and how that, does that apply to what we're doing with the percent of the increase. Well, I can see how that would be challenging for the students. Yeah. <laughs> and the question, it sounded like, had to do with a real-life scenario, like population growth in a country. Are most of the problem-based questions having to do with real-life scenarios like that, that the kids can have a Most of them do. And, and then some of the activities are, um, I know one activity was creating slime, and then it was doing it that way. And so we created slime, slime mm -hmm, the slime, using the glue and the baking soda and things like that. So we're using a lot of household uh, materials that we actually asked our PTA and our, our parents to bring in to help us out with that. So they are actually activities. That you some, are of are activities some of them are hands-on. Some of them are hands-on activities and then some of them are like that. Mm -hmm. Hands-on activities. 